So we're here with 16 Bars. I'm Steph and I'm sitting here with Hedy One on the gallery rooftop bar in Berlin. And I have to say welcome. This is your first time here, right? Um, it's my second time. Okay. But it feels like my first time. Um, but I liked, we were talking earlier about, you know, uh, you cutting out pictures um, and taking them as like motivation and like putting them on the wall um, when you were locked up. And uh, I thought that was really inspiring. So can you tell me about that again? Well, yeah, it's just, it's just something I used to do when Obviously, the situation got, you know, when you get in trouble and that, you don't really have nothing else to do apart from read and, and magazines and that. So I just thought, I was doing a lot of reading, and I thought, yeah, I'll just cut out some stuff that I, I found inspiring and that. I just pull it on like a little mood board on my wall. I kept it there for like the whole time I was there, and yeah, it was motivational. I think the best part about before is that basically everything has come into fruition that you put on the wall, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything in, on that wall that I thought of is coming and more, so maybe I need to go put some more stuff on another wall somewhere. And okay. Hopefully, hopefully that works out the same, hopefully. Is that something you still do? Just like imagine like, what do I want and then go for it? Yeah. I like to, um, I, um, I like to be determined I don't feel like anything's out of um, out of reach, yeah. So yeah, I just yeah, I just stay um, motivated or try to stay motivated and keep them working. What would you say is the most driving force for your motivation? My most driving force for my motivation, I'd say, is um, like I remember the negative situations I've been in, and then I know what it could have been like instead of it being like this. So that's what motivates me to keep progressing and take one step away from getting back into these negative situations. You sometimes look back and you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? Nah, not really. I, I like to um, embrace the negative as much as the positive as well because it's, um, it's all part of the reason why, why I'm here now. As we were saying earlier, you know, picturing where you want to go and then reaching it and then you're like, fuck, I remembered, I wanted to do this. And then you do it. I think there's not any more gratifying feeling than that. Is there anything else that keeps you focused? Um, obviously, my, 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 my team. Dankeschön. That's thank you in German. Oh, yeah. That, um, Dankeschön. Oh, there you go. Dankeschön, <laughs> Dankeschön. Yeah, um, now my team, they, 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 um, they help to keep me focused as well. I got a good working team and that and also my people, my close friends and family. Yeah, they they help keep me motivated as well. Who humbles you the most? My sister. Oh word? Younger or older? Older sister. Oh shit, okay. She definitely Yeah, she's humbles me every day. <laughs> <laughs> humbles me every day, yeah. She just she just real and that she's real and just she doesn't she doesn't try to impress anyone with words, she's like, just say stuff how it is, really, whether you're going to like it or not. I feel like that's that's a good thing to have around because when loads of things are going on around you, people like to just say what sounds good if you're not trying to say. So yes, men, basically, right? Yeah, but she's she's never been like that from young, so yeah, it's definitely, she humbles me the most. When's the last time you and your sister got in a fight? Uh, it's been a long time now, it's been a long time. Did you ever whoop your ass? Yeah, when I was younger though. <laughs> Only when I was when I was a, when I was a, a bit of a kid, but it's been it's been long now. It's been long. But me and her don't argue. She's either tells me off or that's it really. That's big sis, so obviously the respect is there. What what's one of the main things she always tells you to keep in mind? Because I feel like siblings are the most honest, yeah. and they're your longest friend if you think about it. One of the main things she tells me to do is to just not get complacent. And remember, complacent. Yeah, not to get complacent and to remember also, like I said before, that what it was like before, so not to get carried away and forget and like to lose myself and that. You see, that's it, like to remember what it was like before. When you talk about what it was like before, right? It's really hard for me to imagine what it's like growing up in, in London. It's yeah. Tot Tottenham. Did I say it right? Yeah, Tottenham, Tottenham. Yeah. Tottenham? Thank yeah, you, yeah, Tottenham. It. Tottenham, yeah, Tottenham. So could you describe what that was like for you growing up there or what it's like there in general? Because a lot of people, they just can't relate. Um, actually, Tottenham's a town. 
I grew up in a particular part of town called Brutal Farm Estate. It's like, it's like, it's a good community and that very like close knit community. Everyone knows each other. But obviously, it's like, it's not most of, not, it's not positive. A lot of positive that's going on when I was growing up. Oh yeah, you're Ghanaian. I'm actually Kenyan. Kenyan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm going, I'm Ghanaian. So yeah, when I was when I when I was growing up, there wasn't a lot of positive going on. We just used to come outside and play, and you see a lot of things that kids shouldn't really be seeing, if you know what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. So yeah, see, so growing up in that, you get, you know, I can get when you're growing up in those environments, and it can go left kind of quickly. So yeah. Do you still go there a lot? Because, I mean, if it's such a tight-knit community, it's like probably there's still, like, family and stuff there. Yeah, that's, um, I know the same people from when I was, like, two years old till now. We still speak and that. Some of some of us still hang around together today enough every day. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's still close-knit. See, just everyone's grown up now. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy because not everyone that's so successful can go easily go back to where they come from, you know? It, I think that's hard sometimes because even though the, you're the kid they grew up with, now it's like you're so successful. and It can be it can be complicated, but obviously when um, you stay true to yourself and stay true to your peoples, it can, yeah, we just got to just try to remember, isn't it? Remember your peoples. What's like one thing, or what's like a typical Tottenham saying, just for me, if ever I go there? Um, there's so many, you know. Obviously, me, over the years, it's become so different. I feel like me and my, me and my ones, we speak like a whole other language and lingo to everyone else. But we used to say that all the basic London stuff like buff. Buff is like pumped up, or no? Or yeah, buff used to be like if you see a girl. Oh, she's buff. Yeah, she's buff, like she's, she's nice. Yeah, yeah, she's nice. Okay. We used to say show. What? Show. What is that? Show is just a, you could use show for anything or just a random term. So it's like something you put in between. Like yeah, you could say, oh, show. Like you could say, I'm show. I'm too show. She show. It's like, yes, it's kind of like a compliment. Okay. Yeah. And what else is there? There's so many, yeah, we could be here all day, but there's so many different things. But I'll definitely remember that if ever I go. I should I should know to say oh that's a buff dude or yeah that's pretty Shaw I could I could do that right yeah, yeah. they'd still probably everybody there would think I'm crazy but um yo oh our my ties are here whoa they look sick by the way so in Germany we say uh, Prost so you look into someone's eyes yeah. and you do this and then you say Prost Prost yeah so okay now let's get into your first album ever coming out yeah. soon uh, we can't say when obviously. Yeah. Dude, dude, I saw. I checked. I tried to like stalk your Twitter, and it was almost impossible because every tweet you were like tagged and was like, "When is Edna coming? Where is Edna? Why are you doing this to us? When is it?" Like people are really pressing you. Yeah, um, I feel it's because I, um, because I've already announced it and it hasn't come yet. I feel like it's it's kind of like it's getting on um, my fans' nerves. So <laughs> they I, seem nervous. Yeah. I do, I do apologize for the long wait. It's definitely gonna be here. Yeah any minute now so yeah it shouldn't be much longer really and I think it'll be worth the wait you know they say good things come to those who wait so yeah we're looking, we're looking forward to it man. but so with the with the title of the album and one page it said uh, that this is for your mom yeah. uh, is your mom called Edna who's Edna my mom's name is Edna my mom, she, when I was a, a bit younger I was like three years old my, my mom passed away innit so I grew up like with just me and my pups and my sister. That was my, my household. Right. I'm trying to say so. Yeah, I felt like I ain't really, I ain't really had nothing to give since um, since you had this music stuff. So I felt like if I was gonna do my debut album, it's only right that I named it after her. I'm trying to say, yeah. That would also explain why, also your li- more your relationship to your sister. Because for me, also like my older brother basically also raised me. Yeah. I guess that's also a bigger part for you then with your sister, right? Definitely, definitely. When I was um, when things wasn't really going too well, and I was getting in and out of trouble, my sister was always like there for me and that. And she used to like look out for me and always stick up for me and that. So yeah, you definitely got like a, a close bonding relationship. So now. 
Uh, I looked at the cover art, and, and I like it very much, by the way. It's, it seems very intimate, because you're looking at this, it looks like a name tag. Yeah. What name tag is this? From, from, from where is this? Um, it's, it's, it's my name tag, but it's like almost, almost like, um, it's my first album. And it's like, you know, when a um, baby's born, you're given a, a name tag and that. That's why you're so, looking at it like... Yeah. It's like, yeah, we were about to go for the first one, but it's almost like a reborn sort of thing, so... Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to it. I feel like I, um, I feel like the music is good. I like it. That's the most important part. I like it, I like it a lot. I've been listening to it everywhere, so... Yeah, man. I can't wait for the world to hear it and then spread the love and that, definitely. Now, I feel like in interviews I watched of you, um, you were always very adamant about prior projects definitely being mixtapes. Um, obviously, when you start working on your album, is there something you did different conceptually, like the like just how you approach it, I guess? Um, no, not really. I've, I always um, approach my music in a certain way. I don't like to, um, like, um, obviously my music's important to me, so I don't, I handle it with care, if you know what I'm trying to say, I like to, um, take it serious and that, so, yeah, I approached it similar, but just a different, from a different dynamic, so, I don't... Can you describe that dynamic for me? Can you, or is it, like, weird to explain? Yeah, it's one of those ones. It's like, you know, <laughs> you know, you have those stuff that you understand, but it's, when you try to explain to someone else, it doesn't really make no sense, but maybe you, maybe you, maybe you'll be able to tell by the music, innit? So, yeah, just time will tell. Listen. Did you feel like this should be a more compact project, or did you want to put out more music? I mean, obviously, you're not going to tell me how many tracks are on there, but is it, like, a more con co compact uh, project, or more... I feel like one thing that it does do is it, it, we take it back to basics. Um, you know, like obviously, I feel like I've evolved a lot, obviously musically and as a person over time, and you can kind of tell that through the the music. So I feel like if anything, that's one thing it, it does do. It it's not one-sided. It takes you through a whole load of um different things musically and in the production as well so you'd say you've just become more mature as a person and in your music yes definitely i like to think so that's <laughs> great if i look it, i believe it was heads or tails was like 2014 right okay so now edna what would you say you progressed in the most as an artist um i'd say i've when i've done heads or tails I was just rapping, like, just, um... Just to rap, or...? Just to rap for fun. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know, really, um... I was just saying what was on my mind, what was happening. But now it's more like... It's more like a... It's more musical, it's more thought into it. And, obviously, musically, the way I'm rapping on the songs and that, it's different. So many different kind of styles and different flows, so... I like to think I got a bit better since then till now <laughs> at rapping, so yeah, man. Is there something you feel like you can still progress in? Yeah. yeah. Do you have an example? Mm, I might start doing some singing. Ooh, okay. <laughs> some slow jabs and, and I'm joking. I don't know. <laughs> when I go to the studio, like, it's, it's, it's so mad. Because when I meet up with producers Sorry. and start working and that, they expect me to want to to want to hear, so, like, they kind of, like, have a, an idea of what I want to hear, and it's different every time. Oh, Cause, okay. Cause I listen to um, so much different music, I'm inspired by so much different artists, and I'm just, like, I'm open to experimenting and listening to new sounds and experimenting new sounds, so, yeah, 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 it's just, like, it's one of those ones, that's complicated. I get that. I feel like when you said there's so much at stake currently, it, it also resonates to me that you, you just created your own label, One Records. Congratulations to that, by the way. That's a big deal. But that brings a lot of responsibility also. 
not just for your team, but for other artists. How do you feel about that responsibility? I feel, I feel good. Is it a good pressure? Yeah, it's a good pressure. It's, it's, um, it's something that I'm passionate about. Like it was, that's also something that I wrote down many years ago. So to have your own label. Yeah. So yeah, it feels good to actually for it to have actually come into practice. And I don't, I'm a person that I can't really do stuff I'm not passionate about. But I got a short attention span, so um, yeah, I feel like it's come together at the right time, and I put a lot into it. So. Yeah, hopefully it makes sense in the long run for everyone involved. Is there something you wish someone would have told you when you were starting in music that maybe now you tell your artists? Um, when I was starting in music, like, um, it's a thin line, isn't it, between where we're coming from and what we're heading into. Like, one wrong turn or wrong move all the hard work can be undone and that's something that's happened to me so many times I feel like I'm lucky to be here speaking to you right now I've made certain decisions that I've had to and like do some crazy um, background work to undo really and it can all go as quick as it's come really so I feel like it's just it's I would I would have wished someone told me to just pay more attention to the decisions that you're making because they are important, more important than you think they are. So I feel like this year especially has had, for you, and we don't have to go get into it, but has had many highs and extre well, extreme highs and some lows. What would you say was a very pivotal moment for you this year so far? Because um, the year's not over, even though we all feel like it. Yeah, it's not. It's never over. <laughs> but um, mm, oh no, obviously yeah. But the song, the song that I released with Drake and that. That was big for me, car. Drake is obviously one of my favorite artists, and like I find him inspiring and that with all the different kind of sounds he does and obviously everything that he's done over the years. So yeah, that was a big moment for me. Um, yeah. That would be a big moment for every artist, I feel like, on this planet, because it's like, where do you go from there? Beyonce, Jay Z, like where? Where do you go from there? Like that's one of the top tier people to to work together with, right? Of course, man. And also, like I like to work with people which actually enjoy their music as well. You know what I'm say? I like to make music that I would listen to if it wasn't me. So that's why that was also a big moment for me. It's like something that I could listen to. So you know what I'm say? I will say I really loved the video. How did how did that conception come? Um. We were just doing the best we could do with the situation, really. As um. Because of Corona, right? Yeah, because of the situation. Obviously, we was we was unable to travel. Um, I think th at that point it was like it wasn't as laid back as it is now. Like it was intense with all the restrictions and that. So yeah. And we really did want to shoot a video for it. So we just had to make work with what we had and. and Sometimes that's how the best things are made, isn't it? Under high pressure. Under high pressure, yeah. <laughs> Bad circumstances. Yeah, yeah, literally, literally. So yeah, that's how that come about. But were there these restrictions also while you guys were making the track, or did you guys actually link up, make the track, and then it came out later on? Because sometimes you make a track and it takes a while for clearance and stuff. I I was um, recording from home. Whoa. So I was in my I was in a home studio. Okay. And then, yeah, literally, I was in my, my shorts and my dressing gown. And then, um, yeah, I recorded it like that, literally. It was comfy, I was at home. It wasn't allowed to go anywhere, so luckily I had um, the facilities to be able to do so. I feel like, yeah, that also added to the thrill of when the song was received by the public as well. It was, it was a good feeling. So then, but when you, okay, but when you got the verse and you heard it for the first time, were you like, Ooh, because there was a reference to Miss Maya Jama, I believe. Was that weird? Was that like a weird thing or was it like whatever? I don't know. You might, you have to ask her, really. I don't, I don't really know. Okay. It wasn't really me. It wasn't really weird for me. Eh? It's music. It's music, isn't it? It's music, so. Maybe it's one of those things where it's just a line and people like over exaggerate it because they're like, oh, you know, because I feel like UK Twitter was going crazy over this. UK Twitter goes crazy over everything. So literally like... Every day there's something going on in the UK too, so 
I'm not really. I'm used to it. Like sometimes it's inaccurate, sometimes it's accurate, sometimes we don't. We just people always gonna have something to say. So yeah, we just make the music and people interpret it however they want to interpret. It. But it's still a great moment to get the verse and be like, yeah, this is fire, and this dude's talking Arabic, and God knows it, it was it was pretty cool. When I got the verse, I said, I, to, I told I told him I said, yeah, this is you're going crazy on this one, but <laughs> we, got, we got different languages, we got everything going on here. But okay, so you talked about having a home studio, right? Now probably it's a very high end studio, I'm guessing. We got the yeah, we got the best of equipment. We got the best of equipment, yeah. So now compare that to the first time you ever recorded in your life. What was that studio setting like? And where was that? And when was that? Oh, uh, where? Do you remember it? Probably like a decade ago. Jesus. Okay. Maybe so 15? It was an, yeah, I was probably like 15, mm-hmm. 14, only finished school or something. I remember we, the way we used to record before was different. Like, there used to be like 30 of us, 25 of us, all like in some small space like this, everyone's trying to find somewhere to sit. The mic is there, like, yeah, it was a bit different to now, a bit different to now, and then, I feel like that was also good for creativity as well, though. so it, has, it had this um, negatives and positives, because obviously it was like, it was a different environment, and there was loads of opinions, and like, it was almost like working as a team. Is it like, can I imagine it like being like one of those freestyle things where everybody just like spits a verse and then you're like, oh, okay, you just flamed my guy, so I have to, come on. It was exactly like that, literally. We'll go back and forth and then there'll be eight of us on one song. <laughs> eight? Ten people on one song, like, this is crazy, it was crazy. Do you miss those times? Definitely, yeah, definitely. What would you say is your biggest pet, pe- biggest pet peeve when you record? That's a good question, you know. Because there's always something you do to get in the vibe, right? Yeah. Um, when my phone rings, Oof. when I'm on the, it happens to me all the time as well, you know. <laughs> when my phone rings when I'm on the um, microphone, I feel like I'm having like a a good a good run. That pisses me off. Oh wait, okay. So you have your lyrics on the phone, and you're and you're spitting, and then somebody just like like the number comes up, so you're just maybe calling you. Or yeah, and I could be halfway through like the lyric that. Like, and when it's going well, well, she's frustrating because you gotta like, alter it, and yeah, it's a bit frustrating. I have a, I have a, a great. You just need a few phones. I've, I've switched to two phones. My one friend has three phones. Oh, there you go. Yeah, see. <laughs> Recently joined the club. Must f- thank you to my sister, obviously, cause she saw the issue and helped me do some problem solving. So, That's yeah. amazing. Do you do you actually remember your first lyrics you ever wrote? Because I saw somewhere you started writing in like elementary or something. Yeah, um, I can't remember. It would have been something silly. Stop, Cap. You come on. The first lyrics you ever wrote, like, what were they about? Some girl, some. Mm, I remember my first ever lyric. I think I I think I stole it. You know. <laughs> what? I stole it from LL Cool J. You know the LL Cool J song. Um. <laughs> Um, something is it about the sky so blue. Then and then when the sky so blue, I done a remix. I'm on the same floor and I just changed the lyrics. And I went to school and tried to trick everyone and. and Did got, they believe you? I got caught out, but. <laughs> see, we move, innit? We move. Yeah. You're like, this is all Kuji. What are you doing? <laughs> I just changed like one or two words and then. But yeah, man, it's, yeah, it's good memories. What would you say is the biggest misconception about you? Um, lots of people, for some reason, think like I'm like grumpy. Grumpy. Mm-hmm. I'm angry. I'm, I don't know. All these negative stuff, but yeah, I'm not like that. I'm, the, I'm one of the good guys. Is that the only misconception people have about you? I'd say another misconception I think people have is um, obviously because of where I'm coming from. And your history, maybe. And my history, and obviously what goes on behind the scenes, certain times, and that they think it's like. It's all neg- from a negative place, so I might be a negative person, but really, actually, we're just, we're just good people that, obviously, you've just been through stuff and that, and we're just trying to make sense of stuff and make things work, so, yeah, man, it's all coming from a good place and a, and a, and a, and a positive place, we're just trying to put, make it make sense, isn't it? What's something that makes you smile instantly? 
Because we're talking about positivity, so. Money. <laughs> yes, man. No, obviously, my, my, fam, my nephew, my nephew, family, my friends, yeah, my dad, I hold them close to me, they're important to me. Top five, dead or alive? My dead or alive. Biggie. It's, it's a tough one. Okay, so Biggie's one. For Biggie, you. Biggie is definitely up there for me. But why though? I just feel like. I'm sorry, then I'm questioning that. But even just the other day, like I was chilling, and I was watching like old videos of like. Um, him in his silk shirt. Biggie on stage, and then um, Diddy on stage with him. It's just like the energy is unmatched. And yeah, I'm all about energies, and what I feel when I was watching that was, I don't really feel that. All the time, if I'm gonna say. So yeah, it's a weird one, but I feel like he definitely have to. He has to go in the top five. I'll go with um. Hmm. I, when I was coming up, I was a huge fan of uh, Max B and French Montana. A little free bigger belly. Yeah, Max B is sick, man. I feel like he was ahead of his time and that. I hope he comes free soon. So for me, I'll put him in there because I used to listen to him so much when I was coming up. Definitely. Wait, what was it called? Legends of a... Uh, his his series? Legends of a... Uh... But you know. But it was like, I don't know, 28 mixtapes or even more? Yeah, he had so many. He had so many and so many different styles and... Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll put Drake in there as well. I think Drake is a, is a legend. Definitely, for many different reasons. Um... We got three. You have two left. Uh, who else am I going for? You're not a Pac fan? Not really. Okay, but it's always, a lot of times it's Biggie or Pac, so it's like, yeah. Not really, yeah. I'll go more with Biggie. I like Pac's music, but I just more go with Biggie. The energy is different. Mm. Um, for me, I used to listen to Styles P a lot. Ooh, Styles P. Okay. Styles P was sick. He was sick. And I don't know, obviously... They talk about self-love and all that, so I'll put myself number five. Stop. I'll, I'll squeeze myself in. I have to. Okay. I can, yeah, you, as you should. I mean, you listen to your music. Come on. Come on. Okay. What's something people would say? Allow it? No. People, people say that? <laughs> I always see that in people, like memes. People used to say that. But uh, oh, it's out of, out of fashion? Yeah, a little bit. Alla- yeah. Okay. Okay. You so can, don't allow it then. To finish off our interview, obviously we're in Germany. You have some of the most legendary football-affiliated uh, punchlines, lines in general. Yeah. Come on. Best German team soccer players you're into from here. And please don't come around the corner saying some shit about Bayern München, because I might cry. No, oh, I don't know what the footballing situation is in Germany to do with the rivalries and everything. Like, you know, in London, we got Man United, we got Man City. We got I did see there was... T- yeah, T- Tottenham. I saw Tottenham had a team as well, right? Yeah, we got Arsenal. So it's like, I'm just going to be as honest as possible. And if I upset anyone, it's not my fault. But um, I'll say, this German team, it has to be Munich, isn't it? God, I it's can't like, believe you. Champions League. Now, foot, when I used to come into football quite a lot, I mean, the best German footballing team would have been Dortmund. Would have been Dortmund. Would have? That changed? I think it changed when the club um, left. I watched them for a while, but when I used to watch them a couple of years ago, the foot for actual the sport and playing the game, Dortmund, but the best team, like Bayern. Uh, sorry. Is there anything you would like to say to the German community, fans, or just in general? Because I feel like you don't do that many video interviews. So anything you want to say to your people that's important to you, I'll just hand you the mic as you can do so. I never do that. Watch out. There's like a tap thing. I call my, to my people in Germany, obviously, you know, I was meant to come here and share my music with you guys. I went to be on tour, obviously, it didn't really work out because of some happenings, but I'll be back and we're going to celebrate life together and we're going to share a moment, definitely, so just a matter of time. But thank you for the love and we'll link up soon. In every language you learn, you learn how to cuss people out and you learn how to say I love you, right? So I love you in German is... 
Ich liebe dich. Ich liebe dich. Okay, das ist... Ich wollte... Like 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 ich liebe dich. Ich liebe dich. Perfect. And now the cussing is fick dich, which is fuck you. Fick dich. Right. And then if you want to be really mad, like terrible, you can say, uh, well, you say, uh, fuck you, you son of a whore, which is fick dich, du Hurensohn. I know, it's harsh. Trash. Fisch, lech, If I do walk on the street and say that to anyone, it's her fault. Yeah? Disclaimer. Perfect. All right.